Five keys to hear God's voice. Hey, Spirit Fam, these are the five keys to hear God's voice. Key number one, Scripture. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 So before I became a Christian and gave my life to Jesus, I was really lost. I was often an angry guy, sad and depressed, and I was only after financial success. Growing up, you see, we were very poor, and my dad told me, study hard, get good grades, and get a job. And because of this, I was really lost in life. I got into a lot of get-rich-quick schemes and lost a lot of money. I dated a lot of girls that caused me a lot of heartache. I made some friends who weren't really friends at all. They were okay when we had good times. When we hung out, when we traveled, when we partied, it was okay. But when bad times came, they weren't there for you. Those were the type of friends that I had. It all turned around when I started hearing God's voice through Scripture. Because when I gave my life to Jesus, that was the first thing my church taught me. Read the Word of God. God's voice will not contradict God's Word. That's Point number one, scripture. Key number two, quiet yourself down. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. If you can't hear God's voice, maybe it's because we're too busy with the worries and hustle bustles of life. Set aside a scheduled time in the morning, five to ten minutes or more, just to read the Bible and hear His word. When you set a routine and make it a habit, you'll notice the changes in your life. I noticed that I became a less angry person. I became a less depressed person. And in the darkest moments of my life, when I was all alone, I noticed that God's voice constantly reassured me that everything was going to be okay. So how about you guys? Have you read the Bible from cover to cover? I would love to hear from you in the comments section. Just leave your favorite Bible verse down below. And while you're at it, Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get your spirit-filled content on demand every week from me. Key number three, fix your eyes on Jesus. John 10.27 says, My sheep know my voice and they follow me. You see guys, my full-time profession is a real estate broker. Growing up, my dad always taught me, work hard, get good grades, and get a job. So I started selling real estate for a big company here in the Philippines. And I made some kind of money, but it was never enough. And I never knew why. Money was always tight, and bills started to pile up. And when the financial pressure and strain got to me, it was only when I turned to God, turned to the Word of God, that He constantly reassured me. You see, the Bible taught me that I was too focused on my problems and not focused on Jesus. I wasn't seeing what Jesus was doing in my life. I was too focused on what Jesus wasn't doing in my life, which was so wrong. Slowly and surely, I saw that God was transforming my character through the Word of God and through set schedules by fixing my eyes on Him. Key number four is prayer. Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call on to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. You see, guys, when I was an immature Christian, I would constantly pray to God, Please help me with this problem. Please save me from this and that. I would give up all the bad things that I'm doing. I'll just do anything. Just help me with this problem, Lord. And you know what? He would always come through. He would always be gracious and help me with my problems. But then I wouldn't be faithful. When God was faithful, I wasn't faithful. And I went back to my old ways. Maybe some of you guys are experiencing the same thing. But rest assured that when you call on to God, He will listen to you. There was a time in my life when I couldn't sell anything. You see, I'm a real estate agent, which means I help people find their dream homes. And there was a time in my life where I didn't have any sales for six months straight. And that really wrecked me. It also exposed in my heart that I loved money too much. God impressed upon my heart to give money to the church for the building fund even though my finances were down. And I said, No, Lord, I don't want to. 
that that's when I started to hear God less and less. You see, prayer is not just a monologue where we give our needs to God. It's also God talking to us because we need to partner with Him. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. You see, we can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The more we hear His voice and listen to what He does, the more He'll draw closer to us. The more we disobey, the more it'll seem like He's further away. It's like when you have a best friend. When your best friend asks you to do something very important and you don't do it, oh man, He's going to give you the silent treatment and that's going to be a fight. But when you do what He does, your relationship is going to grow deeper and His voice is going to get stronger inside your heart. Key number five is journaling. Write down everything that God is impressing upon your heart. Could be a dream, a vision, a revelation, your lessons about your quiet time with the reading or word of God. You see, when I didn't want to donate to the church when I was still struggling financially, that's when I realized that I was a selfish person. God was testing my heart and seeing if I was faithful with what He has been giving me. A few weeks went by and then I attended a revival meeting. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon me that there was a guy on the other side of the row where I was sitting. Holy Spirit told me, that guy's a pastor. Give him 1,000 pesos because he needs it badly. And this time, I obeyed. I didn't want to run away or disobey God from any longer. So I approached him and said, excuse me, are you a pastor? Holy Spirit told me to give you this amount of money. And then as soon as he turned to me and accepted the love gift, he prayed for me. He told me, you know what? I've never met you in my life. I don't know what you do for a living, but I just see real estate. And you just, I just hear God saying, you're going to make a sale in six months. And you know what? In just three months, I made a real estate sale, ending my six-month drought. Because I gave that amount to the pastor, I was able to close a deal 1,000 times more than what I gave him. In fact, the commission was so big, I was able to pay off all my debts all my bills, and I was able to sow into the building fund with a cheerful heart. Now, I'm not saying you give to get. Now, I'm not for the prosperity gospel. What I'm saying is when you sow and when you obey the voice of God, He will give you so much more because when you're faithful with the little, He'll give you so much more. And so you see, guys, there is blessing in obeying God's word. There is a blessing to hearing His voice, and He wants to bless you. The problem is, are we listening to His voice? The more we listen to His voice and obey, the more He'll talk to us. That's why these are the five keys to hear God's voice. Which key is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. Which keys aren't you doing? Let me know also in the comment section down below. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and hit click the notification bell so you can see all the spirit-filled content on demand that I'm going to pump out every week just for you, spirit fam. Till next time, guys. See you. And let me know which keys are your favorite and which keys aren't you not doing yet. God bless.